since we've got the two of you, I thought we'd do a little bit of Nev Cara Origins. Obviously, you played against each other, but I think 2013, when you get the call from your producer, Jamie Carragher signed, what are you thinking? <laughs> Still is. Have we, got, have we got three microphones? That's what, that'll be no, the best we've got thing. one, but budget, budget for this. Um, I, would, uh, I got the call, I remember where I was, I was in Norway actually, at the time, uh, from, from an ex-producer of, uh, that we know, and uh, who said to me that Jamie Carragher wants to come, it's a fight between BT and Sky, I'm allowed to say that now, and um, he wants to do Monday Night Football, and I said, well, okay, well, I think I'd been driving from the very beginning that Monday Night Football should change every two or three years, and I welcomed it. I should have stopped it. In, in, in hindsight, I should have stopped it. I should have put a cross right across it, and I could have done it at the time. There's no doubt that with the way Monday, with the way Monday Night Football was going... It was going all right, wasn't it? It was going all right, and I could have said, no, I don't think so, but I think it should change, it should evolve. I think all programmes should evolve. And, you know, we've got Roy Keane in this season, Jose Mourinho. I think it's always good when new pundits join, when new people come in, because I think it stimulates the whole programme and, and, and it's better. So, um, yeah, I was, I was okay with it. So knowing you'd have to work with him... It was a risk, by the way. Why didn't you sign somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was looking forward to it. I mean, talking about Monday Night Football, that's evolved. Gary Neville evolved, didn't he? You remember the look on the first Monday Night Football? The dry mouth? Oh, yeah, yeah, we looked like teabag. Remember teabag out of a prison break? And uh, you know his suits didn't fit him. He had that thing going on around his hair. Oh. Actually, have you got your pass yeah. on you? Whereas Where's now, your pass? Where's your pass? Whereas now I've been, I've been exposed to Soho and London now for the last sort of five years. I'm, you you know, actually right? do look better than when you played, I think. Thanks very much. What did you think of him when you played? Uh, I didn't like him, but I thought he was a winner. Obviously a top player. Very lucky to play under uh, Sir Alex Ferg. Was he a top player? Yeah, he was a top player. Yeah. Why did? I thought I'd roll a little grenade in there. No, he was a he was a he was a good player, but all these Manchester United people forget they never won anything without Alex Ferguson. None of them done anything. None of them, anything. You went with England, you went with Valencia, nothing happened. Roy's in the oh. studio, not far. You know, they don't remember. Man United fell off a cliff when Alex Ferguson left. How lucky are they to be with him? So when they, you talk about what they won and what they did. Anyone could have done that. Anyone could have done it. Anyone. Come on, you can't go quiet now. I, 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 I can. Rev, I can. Is it revel? Yeah. I was going to say revel. Then. <laughs> I can. Rev, I can revel in the thought that I had 20 wonderful years. I don't need to answer this spurious nonsense. And do you know what? For this last week, I did uh, Roy Hodgson, and I said, "What was Gary like with England?" I said, "Was he a good coach?" He said, "Not only was he a good coach, he is a good coach." Well, that's, not, that's very nice of Roy. <laughs> no, it's very nice. Look, to be honest with you, I had a wonderful time with England for four years. And it helped me, actually, with my punditry in the sense I was close to players, I was close to the action, I was close to seeing what things were happening. I do feel you lose something when you're not in the game coaching compared to being in it. I, look, when I talk about coaching, I've never spoken about this seriously, because to be fair, it's not something I wanted to do or want to do now. But if I did commit myself to it, I, say, and I would say the same of him as well, if I committed myself to it every minute of every day and every evening, like every coach does that's in this game, I do believe I would be able to get better at it and to be able to coach well. But the problem for me isn't the fact of whether I'm a good coach or a bad coach. I'm not committed to coaching, and that's a problem. You see all the coaches at Liverpool, even Southampton on Friday night, you're looking at Ralph Harson, who blew to be fair, at a desperate time. He will not be thinking of anything else any point in the day other than his coaching sessions, his practices, his injuries, his weights, his, his eat media interviews, all the stuff. And I, it just didn't consume my life. I've got other projects, other things I want to do. He wants to go to the gym every morning. He wants to wander around Liverpool. Don't get like, looking like that by accident, do you? Or one serious point, right? If you have had top careers, which obviously you both did, is it slightly harder to have that motivation to go into coaching? I mean, you kind of feel like you've done it, whereas a lot of the top managers maybe no, didn't no, quite I think have that's, that playing that's career. A serious one. And, and I'll be honest with you, I think some of it might be actually financial as well. I don't think it's a case of like, oh, I've won X, Y, Z, I don't need to do it. Because it's a completely different thing, coaching and management. And, and whether you're successful as a player doesn't necessarily mean you will be or vice versa. But I, what, what you're saying, and I thought about it as well, because everyone in our dressing room, Stevie Gerrard's now manager Ranger, would have said, I'd be in coaching before Stevie or a manager. I was obsessed by the game, still am. But sometimes when I was finished and I was looking at Fergus and Mourinho, Rafa Benitez, Arsene Wenger, they, they, was, they were the four top managers then. And none of them had like, great careers. But I, I do get the feeling that we've been lucky 
in that you know financially your rewards when you're a top player when, when you then go into coaching it's probably difficult then to your wife your kids right we're going to move here we're going to do this we're going to do that when you've actually got a really good standard of living whereas these coaches are mentioned the family are probably pushing them out the door get out there this can change our life you become a top his family player. must be pushing them out the door as well. oh, no no what well, you know you, you think what those managers have just mentioned when they were players yeah. they probably would have been buttons so the family they've still got that drive to go and you know listen they want to be they want to be successful at what they're doing of course but it can change the family's lives the children's lives and the experiences that they'll have and uh, i always felt something like that i didn't want to be moving family or kids around certainly at that age when I was, I was obviously in a fortunate position I, 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 I'm, I'm, really, no, I'm really happy the last two years me that Michael Carrick Scott Parker my brother Stevie Frank John Terry Wayne Rooney's now ventured into coaching and wants to be a coach he announced that I think on uh, on Monday Night Football he said he wants to go into coaching I actually even though I'm a pundit I am really happy that the balance is now sort of shifting towards some coming into punditry and some coming into coaching. Because what I've always said is I did coaching and punditry when I first finished. People who sit there as a coach and say punditry's easy, try it, because there aren't many people who can articulate the words for people at home to be able to listen to it. And people who are pundits who think the coaching part's easy, go and try that and try and get a message into 20 players on a training pitch of exactly what it is that's in your head. Both completely different, but both difficult in their own way. But I'm happy now that some of the top players, I'm also happy that Sean Dyche and Eddie Howe, Brendan Rodgers, who are British coaches that, to be fair, have not had the careers that, say, those lads have had, that are doing really well as well. But I do think some of our top players should go into coaching. I just didn't, well, it wasn't for me, but I'm glad that some of them have. And also then that you've got, I think, Pep Guardiola, Conte, Pochettino, Arsene Wenger, Sir Alex Ferguson, Jose Mourinho, wonderful coaches who've been in this Premier League over the last few years. The best coaches are the most important thing to this league. They're the most important thing, forget the players. When we've had the most successful times in... Champions League football or in European football it's when we've had the best coaches in the world in this country not necessarily always the best players because they've always been at Real Madrid or Barcelona you like to say Dan and Figo in the mid you know, sort of 2000s or whenever it was but you bring Pep Guardiola here you bring Jurgen Klopp here and I, I didn't mention Jurgen Klopp before and I should have done uh, Mauricio Pochettino here you'll have great performances in the Champions League so I think to be fair now what we're seeing is these coaches are also stimulating our young coaches and British coaches so we've got the best international talent we've got young British coaches coming through this game's healthy at this moment in time in terms of uh, the quality of the football we're seeing and I wasn't saying this on Sky three years ago by the way four years ago I was saying I'm really worried about the money that we're spending and actually we're not getting the fruits of, the, of, of what we're spending we are now there are issues that we need to resolve like the issues with racism and other such things but the game is healthy from a quality point of view and we try to get rid of those other issues and I think we're in a good place. All right, we need to finish. Thank you both.